Hello, this is Nathan Crutchfield and welcome to My Job Hazard Analysis. In this session, we're going to be talking about the generic error model system and provide a brief overview of the levels of performance that are required to complete a job. We came across the generic error model system in the U.S. Department of Energy's Standard on Human Performance Improvement Handbook published in June 2009. On review of the generic error model system concept as presented in the handbook, we believe that identification of the type of performance should be incorporated to the fundamentals of the job hazard analysis process. The GEMS model we will be discussing is based on the work of Reason and Rasmussen. It was designed to incorporate how humans make use of information and how performance must move between various levels of attention. For each task, performance requirements may change as steps of the task are completed. Some tasks can stay at the same level with minimum thought required. Higher involvement is necessary as decisions must be made or problems resolved. This session is an initial overview and we will cover more details in future blogs and information insights on the use of the model. As a task is completed, it requires either one or a combination of skill-based performance, rule-based performance, or knowledge-based performance. Each of these place different requirements on the working memory and skill sets needed by the individual or individuals completing the task. Skill-based performance can be automatic and, according to the handbook, reduces the load on working memory by approximately 90%. Skill-based performance is largely found in jobs with physical actions that are completed in very familiar situations. Most of the actions of skill-based tasks can be completed from memory without significant conscious thought. Rule-based performance requires the use of memorized or written rules. These may be acquired through formal training or by working with experienced personnel or from use of standard operating procedures or structured actions. Rule-based performance follows an if-then process. In other words, if the performer of the task identifies a situation that is not in the parameters of the job, he or she makes a decision based on predetermined actions or rules. If X happens, then I must do Y. Examples from the handbook include deciding when to replace a ball bearing that has been inspected, responding to an alarm, executing or using emergency operating procedures. A decision has to be made by the individual and that decision is based on training, rules, guidelines, protocols, or actions that have been predetermined. Knowledge-based performance requires a response to unfamiliar situations where specific rules or actions have not been predetermined or may not apply given the situation. Knowledge-based situations are those that are considered unusual and require troubleshooting, conducting analysis, or conducting experiments. They require the use of problem-solving and analytical skills. Let's look at the GEMS chart. At the top, we see skill-based performance involving routine actions in a familiar situation. If the task is proceeding okay, we continue on to completion of the task. If the skill-based performance level is not proceeding okay, we drop into rule-based performance requirements. Prepackaged actions are used when familiar problem situations are recognized. If we recognize the problem situation, we identify the symptoms, and if it is determined to be a known familiar situation, we can apply a predetermined action. If the problem is solved, we continue with the task. If the action is not solved, we go back through the problem-solving model. If it's then resolved using different rules, we go back and complete the task. If the problem does not fit a familiar predetermined situation, we move into knowledge-based performance. We have to identify available symptoms or familiar analogies that can be used to identify what the problem is. If it can be determined that the problem is matched by analogy to a familiar situation, we can move back into the rule-based performance level. 
If not, a problem solving mode is required and we have to recall mental models that we can apply or use observed symptoms and make use of fundamental principles to update our mental models. We select a problem solving solution and develop corrective actions to the situation and observe the results. Once the new corrective actions are determined, we move back into rule based performance to determine if the problem has been resolved. If it has, the task can continue. If not, we go back through the iteration until the issues are resolved. This chart from the handbook compares attention versus job task familiarity. As familiarity decreases, attention requirements increase. Note that the performance types overlap slightly. Skill-based errors are primarily due to inattention. One drifts away from maintaining focus on the job at hand. Rule-based errors are primarily due to misinterpretation of the rules to be applied. Knowledge-based errors are due to inaccurate mental pictures. A misunderstanding of the issues, a bias, or preconceived ideas over the situation may be blocking or distorting information. Currently, most job hazard analysis do not include a review of the types of performance decisions that have to be made by the person completing the task. We assume that a person can simply move from step to step using identified controls as determined by the analysis. This is probably because the use of the job analysis began during the early industrial era where most of the jobs being analyzed were the skill-based performance as found on assembly lines or basic manual work and did not require rule-based or knowledge-based performance. We recommend that as part of your ongoing job hazard analysis process that you incorporate or at least review whether or not the job requires a variety of, variety of performance types. Any of the three types may be required at different times during a job's completion. If so, then training may need to include more in-depth expertise in problem solving. Additional guidelines communications may be needed or modified based on the performance types if risk and controls of the job are to be kept under control. This is Nathan Crutchfield and I hope this session has provided additional insights on things to consider when searching for improved workplace safety. Please join us again at My Job Hazard Analysis as we continue our review of ways to improve the workplace on a continuous basis.